Lake Mead is drying up rapidly. Water levels are falling in America's largest reservoir. If it dries up, so could power and water for much of the southwestern United States. Imagine Nevada's Lake Mead, her largest reservoir in the United States, as a great big sand pit. And imagine the population of the western United States as a colossal ostrich burying, burying its head in the pit. And now imagine the sand level dropping so fast that the willfully ignorant bird is forced to confront the fact that Lake Mead may actually become as dry as a sand pit in a decade or perhaps even less. That's not very long, is it? This is a catastrophe or disaster in the making. Lake Mead stores water from the Colorado River. When full, it holds approximately 9.3 trillion gallons, an amount equal to the water that flows through the Colorado River in two years. The water from Lake Mead is used for many purposes. It irrigates a million acres of crops in the United States and Mexico and supplies water to tens of millions of people. Its mighty Hoover Dam generates enough electricity to power a half million homes. Additionally, the power from Hoover Dam is used to carry water up and across the Sahara, the Bottom Mountains, on its way to Southern California. In the year 2000, the water level at Lake Mead was 1,214 feet, close to its all-time high. But it's been dropping ever since. When Lake Mead, Lake Mead was built during the 1920s and 1930s, the western United States was enjoying one of the wettest periods of the past 1200 years. Even today, our so-called drought is still a little wetter than the average precipitation for the area averaged over centuries. In other words, for the last 75 years we've been partying like it's 1929. Farmers grow rice by flooding arid farmland with water from Lake Mead. Residents of desert communities maintain front lawns of green grass and golfers demand courses in areas where the temperature exceeds 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the summer. So then, the combination of a changing climate and a strong demand for the lake's remaining water has resulted in a 100 foot drop since the year 2000. That's a lot. A whole lot. And while that's just 10% under the lake's high water mark in 1983, Lake Mead is like a martini glass, wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. So that 10% dip represents a loss of half of Lake Mead's water supply in just nine years, from 96% capacity to 43% percent capacity. Anyone who's gone on a diet knows this simple equation. If you burn fewer calories than you eat, you'll gain weight. But like a cheating dieter in Superman's bizarro world, the western United States has been using more water out of Lake Mead than the dwindling Colorado River can provide to replace it. When output is greater than input, the reservoir shrinks, and it continues to shrink rapidly. Lake Mead's water level fell 14 feet last year, and the Bureau of Reclamation has projected the level will drop another 14 feet this summer. That will bring it very close to 1,075 feet the point at which the federal government can step in and declare a drought condition. 
forcing a reduction of 400,000 acre feet drawn from Lake Mead per year. A typical Las Vegas home uses a half acre foot of water per year. So such a reduction would be equal to turning the tap off for 800,000 households. In 2008, the Scripps Institute of Oceanography issued a paper titled When Will Lake Mead Go Dry? which set the odds of Lake Mead drying up by 2021 at 50-50. Now it's probably even more than that. So then, no more water, no more electricity, no more pumping power. What are all those tens of millions of people going to do? That's a real good question, isn't it? And it's not that far away. So today we are at or beyond the sustainable limit of the Colorado system, concluded the paper's authors. The alternative to reasoned solutions to this coming water crisis is a major societal and economic disruption in the desert southwest, something that will, that will affect each of us living in the region, if not the whole country. Conservation efforts are helping. Southern Nevada has significantly reduced its draw from 325,000 acre feet a year in 2000 to 265,000 acre feet today. But still, the Colorado River remains oversubscribed. They're using more than is being put in or replenished. Millions of acre feet are sent to California. Nevada and, Nevada and Mexico annually, draining Lake Mead and neighboring Lake Powell faster than they can be replenished. And Las Vegas residents tried to pass a bill that would have allowed homeowners to install gray water systems, but the Southern Nevada Water Authority blocked it offering up a piece of fuzzy math as a defense. One of the more radical proposals involves pumping water from the eastern United States, where many regions are suffering the consequences of flooded rivers. Either it rains too little or it rains too much over the Rockies to the west. That's a very expensive proposition. We've taken water from the west now for a hundred years. Maybe it's time to start taking water from the east rather than from the west. Another speculative proposal lies beyond the shores of California where there's an ocean of water available for desalting. Nonetheless, that would also be very expensive. And now that the United States of the world is in a recession, a worldwide recession, well, it could hurt the economy, like they say. In April, the California Coastal Commission approved the West Basin Municipal Water District's plan to build a desalting system in Redondo Beach that can desalt perhaps 100,000 gallons of seawater per day. The power requirement for either proposal, desalting seawater or transporting water over great distance, is huge, is enormous. But if the only other alternative is a mass evacuation or exodus from the western United States, what other choices do we have? Well, this is quite a problem, and again, it is a catastrophe in the making. And this is happening rapidly, very rapidly. The climate has already changed and it's still changing all around the world. All these things are more signs 
of the end times, transition days. There are many, many signs happening day by day. <laughs>